there's a right way and a wrong way to defend against the mother witch with skeletons this is the worst way to defend her with by spending one elixir it's even worse than you have to love her alone find out all the strategies in this video mm, it's an orange juice. welcome back to another code oj where the season is upon us if you do get the season pass please do consider using code oj supports everything that's behind the scenes as well thank you for the support we're here for the night witch at tournament standard an equal level fireball will be able to completely stop her. She's going to synergize really well in fireball bait decks. Alongside the Zappies and the Magic Archer, they have 440 health. Flying Machine has 510 health. All four cards above the deck slots will die to fireball immediately. Then you have the bottom slots, the Rural Piglets, the Musketeer, the Triple Musketeers, and the Wizards. These are the fireballies that need the log, that need a zap and a fireball to finish them off. Sitting at 560 health, she has more health than Musketeer, but less health than a flying machine. She has very similar damage and hit speed as a magic archer, but she doesn't pierce. The magic archer has 100 DPS. She has 80 DPS. So imagine a magic archer trying to take out a giant. She is not a tank killer. Even worse, she doesn't pierce like the magic archer does. Her curse will last five seconds. So anything that she touches and dies in that five seconds will turn into a pig. These pigs have 520 health. 44 damage, 1.2 second hit speed, and they're very fast. These cursed pigs have the same hit speed as a royal hog, but they are 25% weaker than a royal hog. They'll have 25% less health. Instead of 700, they have 500, and they have 25% less damage from 59 to 44. If you've ever had one piglet on your tower, you'll see that it's not really that threatening. It gets a couple hits, and it's not even that much damage, and it's even less damage against a cursed pig. That pig is only going to get two hits on the tower, resulting in just under 100 damage. To give you an idea of how much damage she does by herself, if you don't defend her with Swarmies, it's not that much. Four hits, that's 384 damage to your tower. If you see an incoming Mother Witch, it might actually be worse if you try to defend her with skeletons. She's gonna summon three cursed hogs. She'll die, she won't connect to the tower, but that's gonna be three piggies locked onto your tower, and it's gonna deal just under 900 damage, almost three times more than if you were to leave her alone. So what you wanna do is wait until she locks onto the tower, and that's gonna stop two out of four hits. You can defend against her with Electro Spirit, Heal Spirit, and Ice Spirit, but you have to put it closer or you're going to help her summon a Cursed Piglet. And that's going to deal a lot of damage in your tower than if you were to just completely ignore her. The better placement is to place it just a little bit closer so that she just doesn't finish off that Electro Spirit, only gets two hits on the tower. The perfect placement is to just let her only get one hit. If she gets two hits on the Ice Spirit, you're doomed. That's an extra 300 damage you're giving them. With the Heal Spirit's recent nerf in its damage, it's not gonna really do much. She's still gonna get two hits compared to the Ice Spirit. The only time I think Swarmies are even okay is if you have a Skarmie, because the Skarmie kind of takes care of the Piglets itself, provided that they don't have Zap or anything else. Surprisingly, Spear Goblins can actually stop her from dealing 300 damage to your tower. If you defend with Spear Goblins, it tanks the damage, the Piglet gets two hits in your tower. But, of course, if you place the Spear Goblins just a little bit higher, what that does is that the Cursed Piglet spawns a little bit higher, only one hit on the tower. That's saving yourself 49 damage. Defending her with Skeletons before she locks onto the tower is a Neddy No-No. Goblins, on the other hand, they stab really quickly and they will take her out, but that Goblin will spawn into a Cursed Piglet after it counterattacks, but it doesn't deal any damage provided she's by herself. Bats are probably one of the worst things to defend against her with. They just keep spawning and spawning and spawning. That's four hogs on your tower, four cursed hogs with only one bat to defend. If you just left her alone, that would have been 300 damage. But with the bats, you just gave them a thousand more damage. If you absolutely have to defend her with bats, you gotta wait until she locks onto the tower so she only gets two hits for 180 damage. Minions, on the other hand, they're beefier than bats. They take two hits to kill, and she will be able to completely stop with just one hog hit if you place the minions a little bit lower, which is a bad placement, by the way. The better placement 
is to place the minions way higher so that the pig spawns way higher does not connect to the tower do not pass go do not collect that 49 damage on your princess tower dark goblin can defend against her very very well too it's got really high dps she's not gonna be able to kill the dark goblin in less than three hits but here's the thing is that it does die and the cursed hog does come back for vengeance for two hits for that 90 damage if you let her connect to the tower first she'll get two hits in your tower if you time it a little bit better She's only going to get one hit on the tower, but the goblin has to be on that placement at that timing. Archers are actually the perfect counter towards her because they can tank three shots from her and she does not die. And the fact that they walk so slowly, that curse wears off after five seconds by the time they cross the bridge. Now, with Swarmies out of the way, she is just absolutely terrible against mini tanks. With the wizard, it just tanks her and slows her and he's probably not going to die anytime soon either. Against the Royal Ghost, you got to plant him a little bit earlier because he's invisible, which is kind of a bonus because he phases back to invisible right as the curse wears off. With the Rascals, the Rascal Boy is beefy and it can really, really tank her. But a better position would be to just place the Rascals on top of her just because she doesn't splash at all and the Rascal Boy can get at her immediately within range. One of the most solid distractions is a tank, especially if she's by herself and Ice Golem is going to be very inexpensive and it's a very safe guarantee to be able to tank all of her damage. But the big question is, can the Ice Golem kite her? Absolutely not. It'll tank two shots and then she'll get two shots in the Princess Tower dealing 180 damage. She's more of a reactionary card where you want to use her to defend against things like Goblin Gangs and just really small swarmy things. Those piglets will actually counterattack, so you don't have to worry about putting an ice golem in front because they already are tanking for her. Now, the better position would be to place her in front of the princess tower so it aligns with the princess's arrows and they're both targeting the same thing so you can curse all of the goblins. This just deals way more damage to the princess tower. There's a huge difference in counterattack damage. This one is 1400 damage. Bandit, there's no reason it's not a good counter against her by herself, of course. One interesting interaction to note is that the Mega Minion does not two-shot her like a flying machine. She will survive and she will be able to counterattack with the Piglet to tank for everything else. Mega Minion can one-shot her with the help of her Princess Tower and it is beefy, but you can also counter her with properly placed minions. You never want to use her against the Giant. It's just, there's no damage. This is worse than watching a Magic Archer chip down the Giant. It's going to deal a ton of damage to your Prince's Tower and there's nothing you're gonna be able to do about it. With the exception that it will spawn one Piglet to tank for her, that's the one bonus. You're trading 1500 health for that one Piglet. Here's a better example where she's countering your Mega Minion placed way higher up and then this time it kind of acts like an ice golem you can place anything behind that piglet that's tanking with a tower and maybe heck even overcommit with the graveyard and go for that tower this is a terrible example for a push by the way with the new nerf for the skeleton barrel it's a little bit different her attacks do matter so that it pops a little bit higher and each skeleton spawns a piglet for a nice nice counter attack against graveyard with a, something tanking she will not be able to keep up with the graveyard but it is pretty satisfying watching the piglets trickle up there's about two skeletons for every one skeleton that she kills surprisingly she works pretty well with clone because the piglets aren't cloned themselves and with two witches that's enough to keep up with the trickle of skeletons that are coming in from the graveyard and kind of stop the giant from taking out the tower completely. Just a full trickle of piglets to take out the princess tower. That is satisfying. Not only does the graveyard user have to worry about taking out the mother witches, they have to worry about that steady stream of piglets coming in slowly. She cannot curse a building. It will not spawn a hog. That includes princess towers. For the guards, their shields don't really count, but obviously once they die, it does produce one piglet. As for the battle ram, this is a very interesting interaction where the ram actually does not get cursed, but the barbarians that it spawns does get cursed. Skeleton barrel does not get cursed, but the skeletons that it spawns does get cursed, and they will spawn a ton of piggies. Just like the battle ram, the cannon cart with wheels does not get cursed, but then once it turns into a building without the wheels, it doesn't get cursed either. It's a very interesting mechanic because units that spawn baby units don't get cursed. So the Elixir Golem is not going to be cursed. The Elixir Golem Mites aren't going to be cursed. But the Elixir Droplets will be cursed, producing up to four piglets for a counterattack. That's pretty juicy. Not only do you get four Elixir, you get four piglets. Same thing with the Golem. It does not get cursed. It does not produce a piglet. But the Golemites that pop do produce a piglet. Up to two piglets if you can time it properly. 
Same thing with the Lava Hound. It does not get cursed. Does, does not produce a piglet, but the Lava Pups do produce a piglet, though they do die really quickly. So you're going to need to be in sync with the Prince's Tower if you're going to hope to even get five piglets out of that. Cursed Hogs do not get cursed. Otherwise, it would be just an infinite cycle of curses. However, the Mother Witch is able to curse an enemy Mother Witch, and that will produce one piglet upon death. Tombstone is quite possibly one of the worst cards to play against the Mother Witch. It's just a constant steady stream of skeletons. She's able to one-shot these skeletons one by one by one, taking out the Tombstone, spawning even more piglets out of those skeletons from the Tombstone for a massive push. This is one of the few things that will actually take out your Princess Tower. You are better off not playing that Tombstone and just letting her connect to the tower for 400 damage. Goblin Hut is similar, but not as satisfying. It takes two shots to kill Spear Goblins, so the interaction is very, very different. But at the same time, she will have enough damage to take out the Spear Goblin Hut, but only the Goblin Hut. That's going to be the extent of this. The towers are going to stop everything else. She does one-shot Fire Spirits, but that first wave will die from the second Fire Spirit, and... The Furnace doesn't spawn Fire Spirits fast enough to really take out too many units. Barbarian Hut, it depends on your timing as well. Same with the Furnace. If you play her farther in the back, you can utilize more of her defensive capabilities to take out more waves. If you play her a little bit higher, she's only able to take out three waves. But if you play her very far in the back, she'll be able to take out the entire wave of Barbarian Huts. Overall, she's going to be a very interesting card. She's going to be a little bit higher skill cap, not only to use, but also to defend against. She's going to be very fun. I'm very excited for this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay tuned for more quality OJ.